Here is a limit problem. Of course, our first and favorite option, which I'll call plan A, will be to use direct substitution. So if I have the limit as x approaches three of one over x minus one over three over x minus three, you can see this is going to give us zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. That was our plan A. So we better have a plan B. Notice that I have a fraction or a set of fractions over a fraction. So in the past, what we've done for plan B, well, of course, plan A was direct substitution. And plan, we've talked about different plan Bs. One plan B would be to make a table. Another option would be to graph it. And remember, the key question is, what is the trend in Y? So that's what we'll be looking for, the trend in y as we squeeze the x, in this case, towards three from both the positive and negative side. We learned also we can factor, cancel, and then use direct substitution. And in this case, when I have a fraction over a fraction, now why do I say a fraction over a fraction? Look at our denominator, x minus three, but I can say this is x minus three over one. So if I can make this into a complex fraction, remember from previous courses of complex fraction is something of the form a over b over c over d. And in this case, my d is just one. I had to add that in. Well, if this is the case, my method will be to combine the fraction And then I'm going to try to cancel. And then I'll go with direct substitution. Interesting that I'm going to try to cancel. That seems to be an important step. So this is the method I'm going to use on this complex fraction. So I'm going to write this again after my direct substitution did not work. It gave me this indeterminate form, which just tells me there's a hole at x equals three. I don't know the y coordinate yet. I'm gonna find that out. So if I have this, I am going to try to find a common denominator of three and x. Well, of course, I'm just gonna multiply those two together to give me three x. Now, in my original problem, I'm asking myself, x times what gives me 3x? And of course, I'm multiplying by 3 there. But I can't just multiply the denominator by 3. I've got to multiply by a fraction equal to 1. Similarly, if I say 3 times what is 3x, the answer is what we're missing is x. I can't just multiply the denominator by x. I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. So is my hope that you can see this is going to be 3x in the denominator and 3 in the numerator, and x times negative 1 is minus x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a keep, change, flip. I'm going to keep this fraction. I'm going to change division to multiplication and then I'm gonna flip this fraction. So this is gonna be the limit as x approaches three of keep three minus x over three x, change division to multiplication, and then I'm gonna flip this one over x minus three. Now remember, a times b over a, that allows us to cancel as long as we have multiplication there. So we're very happy with this multiplication, except these two look like they're gonna cancel, but they're off by a factor of negative one. 
So I can write this as the limit as x approaches three of, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna factor out a negative one from three minus x. Negative one times x minus three over three x times one over x minus three. Now, did I get this right? If I distribute this negative, I get negative x. If I distribute it here, I get plus three, which is the same as three minus x, which is what I started with over here. So I can do this. I'm justifying it here. Do you have to justify it? No, you just gotta get it right. This now allows me to cancel these two. Well, what is x minus three over x minus three? Of course that's one. So this cancels to one and one. Why do I mention that? Well, because in the aftermath of canceling, our surviving function here is limit x approaches three of, this is negative one times one, which is negative one over three x times one is three x. And now hopefully you can see after we cancel, we can use direct substitution. Negative one over three times three gives us negative one over nine. And that is our answer. That's the limit. There it is. There's the limit in all its glory. What's the whole? This is bonus. Well, as X heads towards three, remember the limit is the trend in Y. Y is trending towards one over nine. That's the whole. But the answer is the Y coordinate of the whole. How did I know I had a whole? I got this indeterminate form, which means we're taking the limit at a whole.